My name is Oludare Marcel. I also go by Dare, and I work at the after school program at William Sayre High School in West Philadelphia. I started working at Sayre in 2018, I believe. Um, when, after I started working here when I was at Penn, I just needed to find a place that, you know, valued my skills. and so. Um, I've always been in education, I've always loved working with kids and just having fun. My roles here are um, media facilitator, uh, chaperone for field trips, um, therapist, but yeah, you know, whatever the program needs to keep going and for the kids to feel comfortable and empowered, that's what I do. The say after school program, we probably have at least about 30 to 35 that stays each day in different programs. Um, we have cooking, gardening, we have basketball, track and field. So we're trying to get more kids to stay to keep them out of the street and do more productive stuff in the school and around their school community. Ty Sean! Ty! What's up, Doc? <laughs> As of late, I've mostly been doing cooking and gardening. Those are the two things that are really capturing my attention. But um, I started the year by doing, what was it, art and media? I gotta say, it was a lot of fun. I um, ended up picking up a hobby I didn't think I'd like in gardening. Each club has a different director, and each director has a different mindset and view on the world. And I really like talking to them as individuals. You ask the same question and get different answers each time. I love that fact, and I feel like it's really what helps our clubs be there, what they are. Like, I don't think the cooking club or the gardening club would be any the same without Eric. And I feel the same way about art and media and every other club there is. Without the person behind it doing what they're doing, it isn't going to be the same. I like working with high school kids specifically because it's almost like the last stop before you're set in your ways. Being able to come here every day, being able to speak to who I believe are the leaders and the shapers of tomorrow, I feel very inspired and very moved when I'm able to um, get innovative ideas from the youth and see how they see the world because the world that they grew up in is so different to the world that I grew up in. With the speed that the world is moving at, I think that it's very important to be able to um, look at the world with a constantly shifting lens. My job as an artist is to look at the world and interpret it through my personal lens. I look for inspiration wherever I can find it and my main form of that is by the people. The people you'll find gardening are some of the nicest people you will ever meet. Hey buddy. Hey, oh, my God. What's this? No, I'm fasting. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fasting. What is it? The oh, conversations I have with people can strain from anything. Yep. That diversity is really what drives me to continue talking to people. I would describe my relationship with the students as a cool older cousin. Yeah, that's my role, being the older guy looking out for the young bulls, you know? Is there like an example you can give? I think my favorite one is probably getting a Valentine's Day card from Tyshawn. There was two things in there. There was a really bad corny dad joke um, that is characteristics of Tyshawn. And then something along the lines of like, you know, thank you for being a good mentor in my life or something like that, you know? I got a lot more peace out of the garden than I thought I would. Because honestly, um, when I first started gardening, I was going through a really tough time and like, I was using it as an escape, trying to get away from everyone. It was somewhere I could be isolated, but still do something calm and productive with my time. 
But in the process, I've met a lot of new people, you know? Some smart, some not. But, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I love it here. It's a skill, you know, to be able to take responsibility for yourself, to take control of your life and steer it in the direction that you want it to go. Because if you get swept up, you could be, you could be done with your life by the time you're 16 and you still got 40 years to go because you're stuck. You, because of, you weren't made aware of certain things, you were put in a certain box, that's it. We shouldn't have to go through this. There's enough going on out in the streets. You know, I think that we need more men and women to really have a positive feedback to these kids so they can be more outspoken and, and tell you what's going on more so in your community then maybe we can get more people involved. You have to care about what you're growing. You have to monitor it. You have to check yeah. on it. it so problem. you need intent behind what you're doing. You can't just do things to do them. You need to have some sort of feeling going into gardening. I'm involved in um, the um, basketball program. Um, yeah, that's about it. I don't really do nothing else on my free time. And when I came here, like the coach, like he told me, like he heard about me, and like he really wanted me to play and all that. So it was, it was welcoming. I want the after-school programs to look like home. Um, yeah, I just, I want them to be a place where people can feel comfortable, be grounded, feel safe and then be pushed. I am in track. I really like challenging myself in general to see if I can do something. And I guess holding myself accountable to something. And I'm not a really like athletic person at all. It was an interesting question to me to see if I could do it. So I was like, I'm gonna try. But being able to dip my toes into, I guess, and look into various things is like fun for me um and after school yeah oh school. i do drum i think it's called drum line did you drum before um. i tried but i failed i picked it because drumming is fun when you're doing it like you're practicing how to play so if somebody ever asks me have you ever drummed before i could be like yeah i drummed before but at school, you can be you, you can do you, um, you can venture out in different groups if that's what you choose to do. Um, and then I notice a lot of kids with the at school programs, they are more, you know, outspoken now. So, a lot of times, leaders in education default become the most important people in these children's lives because you know they they need emotional support sometimes they need financial support sometimes they need just um a horizon broadening so i think that's most of the reason i connected with eric he's a really cool person and having conversations with him felt meaningful it's a good way to spend the slow time in the garden it's rare to have a group that has been at one school for this long. So I think um, a familiarity with each other and the students and the space, paramount, very important. Um, and then also just like Mr. Collier joined September, you know? So not only do we have experience and seniority, but we also have fresh blood and new ideas. My relationship with him is like, I don't know, I just feel like we locked in, we, like, we close, we good. I can go and talk to him about anything, and like, he'll, he, he be there for me, he look out. He, um, like, he always on top of me, like, he just, like, he, he feel like I can be something next level, so he tell me, like, just keep going, no let nothing stop you. Well, 
with the program, the kids is, well, they're opening up more. With this program, it's getting the kids to open up more. Because now a lot of them want to be presidents, class presidents. How would you describe a good leader? A good leader? Um, like, really, like, someone who, like, stay on top of their teammates, make sure they're good at all times. Like, if someone, like, someone on the team not having a good day, like, check on them. Make sure, like, they don't do nothing dumb or, like, something they will regret. I just feel like it was the right thing to do because I know, like, the, the ninth graders, the 10th graders on the team, I know they're looking up to me. So I just, I feel like I got to lead it, lead the example. A leader in education is like a like a parent, you know. It's like a second, a second mom, a second dad, you know, an uncle or an aunt. It's another, another pillar of the community village that is supposed to be erected to raise a child. So I was in the school district last year. And so there's, there's yet yeah, the three, you have the, the teachers, the staff, the administration, and the school district. None of them are ever on the same page, and they always want something different. I think that's where the, the breakdown starts, because the school district, the administration, and the staff all value something different, and are all trying to get something different out of the kids. I became a teacher because I kind of like kids, and I want to do things that help them. But what you're telling me to do is like in direct opposition to what's best for the kids. Listen to the kids. They know what they need. We don't know what they need more than they do. We may know how to give it to them better, but they know what they need and they're gonna go get it from us or from somebody else. I've been here since 2006. I've been in the school district uh, since 96. I became appointed in 1997. Well, as far as the after school and administration here, it's changed. It used to be a little hard because you couldn't really get like a lot of space, but the more and more rapport you get with the principal and the vice principal and them stuff, they opening up a little bit more. And I think it's all about communication. If they communicate with the, with the um, principal and administration and well, then the, smooth, the program runs smooth. If you no know communication, then it ain't going to but that's why I think this, this program lasted as long as it did because of the rapport with the principal and the administration staff here. I believe everybody hand, it's, it's hands, all hands on deck and sick. I do believe that. The changes I would like to see in the Philadelphia School District and education at large is more honesty. I feel as though um, the people who are in charge now don't treat their charges with respect and they don't honor them and their abilities and their interests and their passions. Who wants to be here? Then, then demonstrate. Children are very, very astute observers and adults oftentimes are so wrapped up in themselves that they don't even know what they're doing, man. They don't even know what they're saying and how they're affecting these children. Well, I think the kids can put a little bit more input. It's, it's challenging and then it's, it's, it's helping out too because to know that these are things that they like and not just because they're doing it because somebody else is doing it. So and it's good to ask the children, well, what do you like to do? Here's some rosemary. Here's some more flowers. Yeah, you can pick a flower if you want, you know? Right here, pick, pick it up, pick it up on the, on the, you know? Okay. It's not a destination, it's more about the journey. Live in the moment. Life has a lot of bad, but in between each punch, there's a little breath of air. Do your best to capture the air and admire it for as long as you can. With gardening, you're, you have nothing but time to admire what you're doing and like how far you've come from the beginning to where you are now. I would like to believe that every after school program, every school is special and unique, you know? Um, but specifically, Sayre after school, I think it's special because 
We try. We do our best, man. We do our very best every single day. And the kids know it and they feel it. And they show up expecting our best. And we show up expecting their best, you know? Sometimes we fall short. Sometimes they fall short. And there's a lot of grace and there's a lot of love and there's a lot of compassion in this group and in this school. It's a group effort that I am not building this community for you. And I'm not building this community for me. We are building this community for us.